Joseph Campbell was an American professor of literature who was really well known for creating the hero's journey, also known as the Mala Myth. What happened was Campbell read myths from all over the world, from all these different cultures, and he felt like he was seeing these 17 moments repeat themselves in these stories. Now, you probably won't see all 17 steps in every story, maybe just one step, maybe some steps. And then he just divided those 17 steps into three sections, departure, initiation, and return. I can't do all 17 steps in 30 seconds or 60 seconds, but I think I can do it in about 10 minutes. So let's use Star Wars since that's a really popular story that I know fairly well. Step one is the call to adventure. This happens when Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Jedi, says to Luke Skywalker, a farmer, Luke, come be a Jedi. Why this is interesting is because what the first step does is introduce the possibility that Luke's ordinary world, being a farmer, can change. Then step two, refusal of the call. Luke says, can't do it, man, I'm a farmer. This is also interesting because Luke's own family says he's not really a farmer, which makes us wonder, well, if Luke's not a farmer, what is he? One of the leading criticisms of the hero's journey is that it's so popular that it's led to safe storytelling and predictable movie making. I did read an article recently which said that something like 50% of the movies that come out of Hollywood use some version of the hero's journey. That's why sometimes you can watch a movie for the first time and you feel like you're watching it for the 10th time because there are very familiar elements being incorporated. Anyway, step three, meeting the mentor. This happens in Star Wars after Luke accepts the adventure and now he has Obi-Wan Kenobi to be his mentor. The significance of this is that Luke already met Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? But you can't have a mentor until you accept the journey. That feels like a life lesson or something. Anyway, step four is crossing the first threshold. This is when the hero of the story first crosses into the field of adventure. Funny thing about Star Wars is after I learned about the hero's journey, I realized that certain scenes seemed like George Lucas was announcing the next step in the hero's journey, like the cross on the first threshold is when Obi-Wan says, Moss Eisley Space Station, you'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Step five, the belly of the whale. This is the final step of the first section of the hero's journey. Remember how I said there are three sections, departure, initiation, and return. So step five is the last step, but that isn't to say that it's like the end of the first act. Three, the three act structure in the hero's journey are kind of cousins, but they're certainly not the same. If you wanted to be more specific about it, I would say step four is really when the second act of the story would begin. Step five, belly of the whale. This is when the hero makes a clear departure from their ordinary world. This is also when Luke basically leaves the planet. The significance of this is that leaving the planet is a gesture which suggests a willingness to change, to undergo a metamorphosis. And when Luke leaves the world and he's flying through space, he's undergoing that metamorphosis by way of tutelage from his mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was teaching him on the spaceship how to use the force, how to fight with a lightsaber. So now we're in this section of initiation. Step six, the first initiation step, is the road of trials. This is when the hero runs into a certain set of trials and typically fails them. And also typically they happen in threes. Now, I guess I could say the road of trials happened in Star Wars. Like Luke's on the ship, he's got the virus down, he's doing a lightsaber thing and he gets shot, right? And he kind of fails that, but that doesn't really work. I actually feel like George Lucas didn't use that in Star Wars, but he did use the road of trials in The Empire Strikes Back, especially when it comes to three. First failure of Luke is when he was an impatient punk with Yoda. Second, he needs to get his x wing out of the swamp. He doesn't have the faith, so Yoda does it for him. Third, Luke enters a cave that is dripping with the dark side, and he fails. So then there's step seven, which is the meeting with the goddess. There is no goddess in Star Wars, but typically the goddess is somebody who gives the hero a tool or an item that helps him along his journey. So there is no goddess, but there is a Yoda who helps Luke Skywalker learn how to use the Force. Step eight. Woman as Temptress. Yeah, that's what Joseph Campbell called it. Woman as Temptress. The temptation is basically anything that drives the hero off the path that they are on. And the temptation certainly doesn't have to be a woman. It can be anything. I don't think Woman as Temptress is used in Star Wars. There is a moment where Luke sees Leia for the first time, kind of cocks his head like he's thinking, huh, not bad. But then they find out they're siblings and understandably they never mention that moment ever again. I don't think Woman is Temptress is used in Empire Strikes Back either, but there is an interesting moment in Return of the Jedi. There's a scene where Luke is fighting Darth Vader. Darth Vader reads Luke's mind and realizes that Luke has a sister. And he says, all right, man, if you don't want to turn the dark side, we'll turn her. Luke goes nuts, beats the hell out of Darth Vader because he's so angry at the idea of Leia being turned to the dark side. The irony, though, is that the idea of Leia being turned is tempting him to the dark side because he's using anger, which is a dark side thing. This also leads to this philosophical discussion is that if the light side doesn't use anger, then how come anger is how Luke was able to leave Darth? Step nine, atonement with the father slash abyss. So in a lot of the myths that Joseph Campbell read, 
Her father was a powerful figure in the hero's life and something that had to be contended with, dealt with. And so, yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that the hero's journey had some sort of influence on Star Wars. In Empire Strikes Back or Episode 5, Luke Skywalker is fighting the second most evil person in the galaxy. And that evil person looks at Luke and says, man, your daddy ain't dead. I'm your daddy. And now Luke has to atone with that somehow. Also, he got his hand chopped off. Step 10, Apotheosis. This is the moment when the hero has his great realization and greater understanding, which he's finally achieved. In episode four, it happens after Luke destroys the Death Star and Obi-Wan Kenobi kind of echoes the sentiment when he says, the force will be with you always. And then in episode six, when Luke Skywalker refuses to kill Darth Vader, he looks at the Emperor and says, I am a Jedi like my father before me. Apotheosis. What's interesting is we're still in section two of the hero's journey, but these moments typically happen at the end of a movie or story. I don't have enough fingers to tell you that this is step 11, the ultimate boon, and this is also the end of section 2. Interestingly enough, the ultimate boon is typically the end of a lot of stories because this is when the goal of the adventure has been achieved. What I also find interesting is that the ultimate boon is not necessarily a uniform thing. Ten people can look at the same story and have ten different ideas of what the ultimate boon is. So in episode 4, was the ultimate boon that the rebellion destroyed the Death Star? Maybe. Or maybe it was that Luke Skywalker learns that he's not just a farm boy and he's very adept at using the Force. In episode 6, was the ultimate boon for Luke to rescue his father? Maybe. Or maybe it's for Luke to become a Jedi. I'm not sure. Sometimes my opinion changes. And what's the ultimate boon in episode 5? Luke gets his hand chopped off, a little great health care, he gets a new hand, and he finds out that his father's a jerk. He has to deal with that. But also, Han Solo gets kidnapped, and they're going to get him back. Like, they're confident that they're going to get him back, and that the fight goes on. So maybe the ultimate boom of Emperor Empire Strikes Back is hope. We finally reached the final section of the hero's journey, the return. So, step 12, refusal of the return. Sometimes the hero's journey leads them to a place after acquiring the boom, the ultimate goal of the adventure, where they don't want to go home. They're satisfied with where they are. This doesn't really happen in Star Wars, but it sort of happens in a way with the sequel trilogy. Luke Skywalker is the last Jedi, but he refused to teach the Force to anybody anymore, so he secludes himself off to this far-off planet on, on an island. The reason why that doesn't technically qualify is Luke's not the hero of that story. Rey is. Step 13, the magic flight. Sometimes... When the hero acquires the boon, the goal of the adventure, they also have to escape. And this might be because the main villain is jealous of that thing that the hero has acquired. In Return of the Jedi, before the second Death Star, second Death Star explodes, Luke has to fly away with the body of Darth Vader, who's been redeemed. And the Emperor did not want that. He either wanted Luke as his apprentice or Darth Vader. Luke's got to fly away. Also, the kind of space flight they have in Star Wars is pretty much magic to us. I'm kind of reconsidering what I said in the last post. I know that Luke Skywalker is not the hero of the sequel trilogy, but maybe he's a hero. I mean, certainly part of the story is that Luke Skywalker is considered the hero who can help the Resistance fight the First Order. So, Rey seeks him out, which is actually step 14, rescue from without. A guide finds the hero and brings him back from their seclusion to join the community. Step 15 is the crossing of the return threshold. This is when the hero finally returns and brings with them the wisdom they attained during their adventure. Maybe this is what happens between episode 6 and episode 7 when Luke Skywalker, now a Jedi, opens a Jedi Academy. Step 16, Master of Two Worlds. This moment is represented by the hero who has mastered both the external and internal of their world. In The Return of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker finally becomes a Jedi, master of the external. Internally, Luke also resists the temptation of the Emperor to join the dark side. Step 17, Freedom to Live. This is the moment when the hero is no longer afraid to die, so they are free to live. They no longer regret the past. They no longer anticipate the future. You might say Luke Skywalker does this in Episode 8 when he projects his aura across the galaxy, pinpoints it on a planet, and uses that to fight off the main villain Kylo Ren so the Resistance can escape. That's it. Oh, also because he dies immediately after and he wasn't afraid to die. But that's it. That's the hero's journey. Now, to be fair, there are some critiques, which I think are reasonable. One is that Joseph Campbell created this storytelling system by looking at all these myths around the world and considering their similarities. The thing is, the differences between those cultures is just as important, which might make for some bland storytelling. Another is the hero's journey focuses on men. So there are several variations of the hero's journey, including the heroine's journey, written by an author named Maureen Murdoch in 1990. And finally... Some people think the hero is kind of overrated, that the community wins, or maybe that you should be your own hero.